Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Brickside Chat. We're on episode 32 this week. And before we get started, I just want to say if you guys are watching this on the day it comes out, today is the final day of our Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale. Today is Monday, November 30th. Today we still have stuff on sale. So go down in the description, you can click the link to our store if you want to make any last minute purchases. Everything is between 30 and up to 80% off certain lots that are in our store that we've had for a long time or whatever it might be. So if you need parts, we got a great sale going on right now. It would be the best sale of the year by far. Um, also, in addition to that, some exciting news and something we kind of mentioned, uh, Paul and I streamed the other day, and we mentioned uh, a little bit as Chris from the Great Brick Lab brought it up. Uh, we now have a P.O. box. So if you guys want to send us anything, we were thinking about doing something for the holidays um, where you guys send us something and we can open it up and do something with it. So if you guys want to send us a gift or whatever it might be, a package or a letter or whatever it is, the P.O. box will be in the description below now of any video. So if you guys want to send us anything, whether it's, uh, I don't know, candy from a different country or a letter or a Lego set or a minifig or anything that you guys want to send us, uh, you can do that now. I know Chris specifically said he had something. And what we want to do is we want to open these up and make videos with these or, or something with them for sure. So. Uh, P.O. Box, like I said, in the description now. It'll be in the description of every video in the future as well, and I'll go back and put them in some of the past ones as well. So if you want to send us anything, I know a lot of people have been asking and saying they want to send stuff, but finally, we're telling you we have the P.O. Box now. So that is an option. So we got a good amount of questions this week, which we'll just get started on. Uh, first one is from CKTV, who says, how often do you need to update the inventory? And this is in regards to pricing. Uh, using brick stock. Now, I've answered this question before, but I think it's changed a little bit since we've done it. And partially that's because when we upload a new piece, we have it update the price of that piece. Uh, until recently, we weren't actually doing that. We were always having it be the same price as you know a piece that we added maybe six months ago. Meaning if we weren't updating those prices often, it wasn't updating the prices in our inventory you know, as we add parts. So now when we part out whatever set it might be, and if it has this part that we already have in our inventory, it's going to update that old price to the last six month sales average currently as we are adding that part in the moment. So uh, we now update, I would say probably every two to three weeks now. It's not as consistent as it used to be because as we're adding parts, it does get updated. And over time, eventually everything gets updated or gets sold and then you add a new piece or whatever. So not super often anymore, um, but at least probably once a month for sure. Uh, now, one question uh, from, I think it's Gab, Gabgen or Gabgen, um, sorry about butchering your name, um, said, how much did it cost for shipping? And this is in relation to the 8,440 piece order that we had. I think this video came out last week. I'll put a card in the top right if you want to check that out. It was a pretty cool video. I'll also put that picture on the screen right now. These were three packages, two medium flat rate and one large flat rate box, meaning the total cost around... Uh, $50 roughly in the actual packages to ship. Now this buyer did request and pay for insurance, so of course we added the insurance to that as well. And then it ended up being about $75, I believe, to ship those three packages uh, for this large order of 8,440 pieces. That's a lot of parts. Um, but yeah, so about $75 total, including insurance to ship those packages. Now a good question we got here from Rita, and this is something we haven't really had in the past, and I'm kind of, uh, Interesting, and it's something Paul and I have talked about for a while now doing specifically, if this is, would be an interesting kind of pricing thing. But Rita asks, uh, or Bricks by the River, says, do you use the tiered pricing? If yes or no, why? And how do you use it? So the answer right now is no, we don't really use tiered pricing in our store. We're not really looking, I don't know, we've, we've never spent the time to really go through and, and change the prices for each individual piece. Though it is something we have been talking about in the recent past, probably the past I don't know, maybe a month or so, we've been talking about doing different things. And this is what Rita does. Uh, at six months, the six month sales average, let's say, is you know, 0.8 euros. Um, if you purchase one to nine items, Rita charges one, or sorry, 0.9 euros, even though the six month sales average is 0.8. So 0.1 euro more than the past six month sales average. Though, if you order 50, or 100, sorry, 10 to 50 items, it is the last six month sales average. Then if you order more, it costs a little bit less. So Rita has kind of this tiered pricing where if you don't order enough, I'm actually gonna charge you more than if you order uh, you know, the normal or the recommended amount, then it'll be the normal six month sales average price. So this is what Paul and I have joked about. We're gonna set tiered pricing where 
if we have two pieces in, in a lot that aren't minifigs or something, and you only order one, we're gonna charge you like a ridiculous amount, like $12 for that piece. But if you order two, then it'll be normal price. Just so we're not having like a ton of single piece lots in our store or something. We've kind of joked about that. Um, but considering that this is how Rita does uh, the pricing, I think that actually allow or lets us know that yes, you can do that. You can actually charge more, um, you know, if you than the six month sales or, or than the normal price of that piece, I guess. So one question from Rita says, do you do uh, wish lists consider tiered pricing or only the regular prices for items? And unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I'm not sure if wish lists look at the tiered pricing if you need five of this piece and it goes off that price or if it just goes off kind of the base price for that store. I'm not sure, unfortunately. Um, but no, we don't use tiered pricing at the moment. It's something we're, we've been talking about um, like actually doing so that we can kind of move some inventory a little bit quicker or incentivize some people to purchase you know this item or more of this item so we're you know moving inventory again um, something we've talked about something we'll probably start implementing in December once uh, I'd say about mid-December we're gonna get back into the store where we're really kind of you know hammering through and going through uh, adding parts managing the inventory and all that kind of stuff and YouTube in theory should start to pick up mid-December again if not at the beginning of the year um, Okay, next question, Reigns, who says, where do you get the used minifigs from? And this is from the last video where we had a couple used minifigs that were in an order. Um, so we actually got a lot of used minifigs off eBay probably like two two or three months ago now, and over time we kind of just slowly have been adding them. Um, it was this lot of a ton of used minifigs um, that this person was getting rid of his collection, and they were all reason like super reasonably priced, and a lot of them we're getting, I mean, we've already made our money back easily, and we haven't even added all the minifigs in. I still have two, like like the one gallon Ziploc bag sitting on my desk at home that I just haven't inventoried yet. That, um, And I think it was a total of like three one gallon Ziploc bags. So made our money back easily. There's still used, in, used parts in our store. Um, really great price, but it was just on eBay that I was fortunate enough to find this listing and instead of just purchasing like 15 minifigs this guy was selling, I made an offer for how the whole thing, his whole his whole offer, and, and I, he took it, and uh, we got a great deal on that. So eBay, we were just very, very lucky in the right spot at the right time. Parker Adams asks a great question. Um, says, what number do you track uh, on your own versus let BrickLink track for you? For example, I don't think there's a way to tell BrickLink what you paid for a part. Do you track that? So uh, let me get back to that second part of your question in a second, but we track pretty much everything. So, except that last part you said. We track, you know, uh, what the, or how many parts I guess are in each order, how many lots are in each order, how much the order was, how much we charged for shipping, if there was any tax that was charged. We don't uh, calculate or talk or track, I guess, the BrickLink sales tax. So being in California, if you order in California now, BrickLink itself charges a separate sales tax. So before, when we were actually charging sales tax for those who were in California, um, because we had to charge that, we would keep track of that. But now I think we're pretty much just gonna push the tax out of it completely because BrickLink takes care of the taxes and we don't have to touch anything anymore. So I don't think we're gonna track that, um, but we then track what our PayPal fee was, what we actually paid for shipping, um, what else? There's probably more, uh, the, the order number, the buyer name, uh, that all that kind of stuff is in one master spreadsheet that we have that we slowly uh, fill in over time and stuff with uh, with BrickLink. But we don't let BrickLink just handle all of it because after, is it nine months or a year? I can't quite remember. BrickLink purges orders, maybe it's six months or something. So you just don't have orders anymore. Um, so you can't really go back and easily see all that information. So we try to keep everything totally separate on our own spreadsheet. Um, that we'll do, we'll probably do another spreadsheet for 2021. This has been our 2020 spreadsheet um, and we'll continue going from there. Um, but we don't track uh, what we paid for each part. And part of the reason for that is because we didn't do it from the beginning. So it makes it even harder. So if you do it from the very beginning, there's actually a My Cost section on BrickLink. You can uh, enable that in your settings. And then from there, what you'll be able to do is type in, this part cost me four cents. And then BrickLink, you know, you can actually see, BrickLink will track how much it cost you to, for this order and how much you made off that order. So you'll start to see uh, those numbers and see the returns a little bit better. We just do it month to month, which is not the best way to do it because in July, we might have spent $500 on stock, but we didn't make $500 back on that stock in July until the following month or the following next two or three months. So it doesn't quite work perfectly, but if we see ourselves in the green uh, each month, then we're probably doing something right because there is positive money each month 
following you know whatever we spent the last month so hopefully that made sense but we don't track how much we uh each part is paid for it's instead kind of a lump sum of what did we invest in our you know back into the store whatever month that was bavarian bricks asked a good question says how long does it take and this is a hard question to answer how long does it take for you to make a profit with a parted out set for example if you're buying eight sets at twenty dollars each how many days weeks months will it take to get those 160 dollars back and eventually break even and make a profit. Very, very, very hard answer to give. Reason being, if we only purchase eight sets that are $20 each, $20 sets aren't gonna be huge in terms of how many different lots there are and how many pieces. So if, you're, if your whole store is only that big, it's gonna take you a very long time to make your money back. If your store is 12,000 lots, 200,000 parts, that $20 or that $160 that you put into your store could quickly return because so many people are coming to your store buying so many different pieces. Um, and you know, it just happens that the parts that were in that set ended up being in their order. So it's really hard to say. Um, and I really wish I could give you an answer Bavarian Bricks, but unfortunately I just don't know because you know, it takes a lot of time. Now, something to keep in mind with this or, or with this concept, I guess, is if you're gonna purchase a set that has a high minifig count, if those minifigs pay for the set, then when you see those minifigs sell, you know for a fact you already paid for the set and the rest of the parts are profit. And this is kind of what Pop's Block Shop does when he's searching for things. He looks for a set and if he knows that the minifigs pay for the set, the parts in that set are all free to him essentially. So he takes the minifigs out and he will list those either on Bricklink or eBay and then he sells those and all the parts that he puts in his Bricklink store is just additional profit that he's making. Um, on top of the minifig. So that's kind of how he looks at it a little bit, depending what the set is, obviously. Um, but obviously we're selling parts and minifigs only in Bricklink, not on eBay. So it's a little different for us. We just try to see that three times part out value. If it is three times, we'll look at the pieces and does it look like they're gonna sell or does it look like they're gonna sit in our inventory for two years? If they're gonna sit for two years, we probably won't purchase that set because it's not going to be worth it. Um, so we have to kind of do the research and stuff there. Um, but unfortunately I don't, uh, I don't have a simple answer for at what point does it break even when you spend $160 on inventory. Question from Will Harper says, I know other channels do live streams, but have you ever thought about doing a bi-weekly or monthly podcast with other store or owners? And I have thought about this. Um, and I've kind of wanted to do a podcast for a period of time. The truth is I don't entirely know what I would talk about. Um, because like right now I'm answering direct questions so I can speak for a period of time. Uh, but when it comes to a podcast or something, I just have to talk about random stuff. So th that's the benefit with doing streams. You know, I can sit there for two hours and build a set and stream because there's someone to interact with. There's something to interact with. So uh, when you said do a podcast with other store owners, I think that'd be incredibly fun. I would just need to find some good, you know, kind of temp, not template, but guidelines I can set up for myself so that this podcast flows and has you know, set segments to it or something. I don't know exactly, but I have thought about doing a podcast. If I do one, it would not be until next year. It will definitely not be in December of 2020. It'll be somewhere in 2021 if I do one, but I have thought about doing a podcast. Um, part of it could be, I guess, just getting topics from you guys. What should I talk about and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, podcast has been on my mind for a while. Um, I know Kyle and Paul and I have talked about it definitely for sure. So that is an option. Um, and it's it's in the back of our mind for sure. And it's something we were, we're thinking about, but at the moment, um, no podcast for 2020 at least. Now the last question comes from Chris from the Great Brick Lab who says, since the remodel work has been done in your current location, and if you guys haven't seen those videos, I'll put the playlist up there, uh, three videos where you can kind of see this garage totally turned around. Uh, it's actually really amazing, um, kind of what we did in the cabinets and fridge, and I don't even remember what it used to look like. It's, it's really cool though. Um, but since the remodel work has been redone in your current location, do you feel this space will meet your needs for the next three years? I do. Um, I don't know, three years out is a while. Thinking we've been doing this almost a year now makes me feel like, yeah, we probably could do another three years in here. Um, I would say for sure we could do probably two years. After two years, I would worry that like this side of the wall will be filled up um, and we'll have to build another aisle or change our pick path, which I know Chris, you and I have talked about at some point is redoing our pick path here. Um, so yes, I do think it could do the next three years. We would have to, uh, you know, 
vacate some of the parting out space. I don't think we could utilize this much room, unfortunately. But I do feel for the next three years, we could definitely uh, utilize this garage and maintain this. So we're not looking in the moment to getting some sort of warehouse or anything. Um, because currently, this is perfect, in addition to the fact that we will be living here. Um, so there's no, you know, I mean, it's just convenient. Um, and the cost uh, is, you know, not like $2,000 for a warehouse or something. So it's perfect. So yes, I want to say yes for the next three years, if not three, 100%, I think this can do it two years. After that, we may look to expansion if we'll see where we are in two years, I guess, is, is the answer to that question. Um, but that is all the questions for uh, for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, I feel like this has been a really long one. If you're still here with me, you're incredible. Um, last, let's have a couple things. I guess Cyber Monday sale. Like I said, check out the description below. Uh, there's a link in the description to our store if you're looking for any more parts or anything this last uh, Cyber Monday. If you're watching this on that day. Also, we got that PO box. That'll be in the description as well. If you want to send us anything for the holidays, if it gets here before. I think the 20th of December, which I know is only like three weeks away. If it gets here before then though, uh, we'll probably do some sort of holiday video if we have enough stuff that shows up. We'll see though, not entirely sure. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and got some use out of this. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. If you've not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out. Thank you so much. We'll see you all in the next one.